Hi folks, my name is Andy Siegel of Siegel & Siegel. I'm a Huntsville criminal defense attorney. Today's topic is what you need to know about SORNA. SORNA stands for Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act. The SORNA laws apply to people who have been convicted or adjudicated of sexual offenses. I'm not going to go into great details in, in this video, frankly because the SORNA laws themselves are about 100 pages long and you know, they're online. If you want to read them, you can. But I do want to talk about what they are, basically. So, first thing is, they are registration. A person who is convicted of a sexual offense and uh, or, or admits to a sexual offense, whether a conviction or a guilty plea, finds themselves subjected to the registration laws. And that means that they are a registered sex offender. Registration means that they are listed with law enforcement as a sex offender. Their name goes on a registry. They are the usual suspect, so to speak. The reason for it, the logic behind this, is that there is a belief that a person who has committed a sexual offense is more likely to reoffend than other types of, of crimes. There's a belief among law enforcement and apparently the people who make the laws that the, the recidivism rate is higher for people who are convicted of sexual offenses and they pose a greater risk to public safety. And so they have put in place a number of laws that pertain specifically to people who are convicted of sexual offenses. So that's what is the, the registration and registration applies um, you know, to, to anybody who is convicted, or almost everybody who is convicted. There may be some exceptions I'm not thinking of that typically applies. But notification is uh, typically public notification, and that is that a, uh, the public is notified, but again, because of the concerns for public safety, uh, you know, a neighbor may get a flyer saying, so-and-so who's been convicted of a sexual offense is going to be moving in. And obviously that when that happens I'm always reminded of the scenes in the old Frankenstein movies where people are lighting the torches. Nobody wants a convicted sex offender living near them and consequently it makes it very difficult for a person convicted of a sex offense to find a place that they can live. Uh, the other reason for that is that a sex offender can't just live anywhere. They are restricted from living within certain distances of schools and housing projects and nurseries and things like that. And to find a place that is a compliant residence uh, it can be quite a challenge for a person who's convicted of a sexual offense. In my experience is that most people convicted of sexual offenses wind, it up, wind up having to live in a relatively isolated area, usually somewhere out in the county, because if you drew a map of, you know, of here's a school, here's a daycare, um, here's a housing project, and you draw those circles of geographic distance, well, everything gets covered up and they, there's just nowhere to live. So those are the basics of the SORNA laws. Again, it's a good reason for a person who's accused of a sex offense to try to find an alternative resolution to those kind of crimes to hopefully avoid a conviction and to be uh, subject to those laws. As far as the notification provisions, there are a, a few little hoops and loops that, that can apply on those, particularly in the case of a juvenile who may not be subject to the full uh, notification provisions. There's a, an assessment done as to whether they are a high, uh, low, uh, or moderate risk, and depending on a judge's assessment on that, they may not have the full notification, depending on those kind of things. At any rate, this short video is simply meant to provide some general information about that. Uh, please understand that the laws are constantly changing in this area of the law, and it is a very complicated area of law. So I'm not giving you legal advice. This is meant only for education. I would suggest that if this is an issue that affects you or something you love, you really need to talk to a lawyer and get details. And like I said, the, you know, the fact that I'm making this video today, tomorrow these laws may be completely different. But I do hope that this has uh, been helpful to you, at least from a general educational standpoint. Thank you for watching.